Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome welcome to Jim's 5am club. I'm down here Harborside, it's early morning, a little bit of a breeze blowing, some cloud there on the horizon which are going to uh, impede a uh, beautiful sunrise and it's uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, summer and uh, I've just got off the train hence my muffled voice because I'm wearing a mask but let's go on a walk and talk and today I want to take you through a book summary entitled The Wisdom of Crowds by an author named James Sarowski. Anyway let's head off and do a walk and talk and I'll take my mask off and uh, hopefully be a little bit more clearer shortly. So uh, you can well understand that this book is all about uh, making decisions and whether or not being in a crowd or being in an individual comes up with a better outcome. So uh, let me tap through here. There we go. So we're off and running. Let me take my mask off. There you go, that's better. Anyway, thank you once again for joining me on Jim's 5am Club on this beautiful, beautiful morning. It's balmy, it may be over overcast, but it is balmy and it does feel like summer. So I'll just head up here to the International Passenger Terminal where I see a barge up there, a barge with a crane on it. How special does that look? We'll go up there and check it out. Anyway, so uh, the author kicks off his book by making a, a strong statement about crowds and thinking and coming up with the best outcomes. And he suggests that paradoxically, the best way for a group um, to be smart is for each person to think and act independent, as independently as possible. So that's the opening position. So what we'll do is we'll examine how groups come up with decisions and uh, how those decisions are in general. And what we'll find is that there are some great decisions that groups are able to come up with, but also some hopeless ones as well, depending on the biases and the challenges that uh, occur in a group environment. Oh, it's still pretty dark. Um, sunrise now is probably around about five past six. So it's getting later and later in the day. So we'll just keep on, uh, keep on going and see where it leads us. And uh, the author's first key point in the book is that big crowds reach better decisions than individuals which is uh, an interesting way of seeing things and looking at the world. And he uses an example. And the example that's used is at a, at a, at a fair, they made an observation, or they've made observations over years, that uh, when people are asked to um, um, guess the weight of an ox, a massive ox, when they tally up all the numbers and look at all the observations, most, or most, in fact, every person is wrong when it comes to uh, calculating or estimating the exact weight of the ox. But what the uh, researchers were able to come up with was that when you actually looked at the average of all the uh, people's observations and and answers, the average was almost spot on. So it's a powerful, a powerful concept and a powerful way of looking at the world to think that on average, a crowd, when, uh, when the people are thinking independently and, and putting in their independent sort of uh, observations can come up with an answer which is pretty well spot on. And other examples that we have 
is uh, things like Wikipedia, where individual people can contribute and fill in the blanks. And uh, the end result is that you get a, a clearer and a better outcome, a better picture, a better answer than just having one person research it and come up with their own observations. So you know, it's, it's another way of looking at looking at the world and it's, uh, it's pretty interesting and pretty powerful to say the least. And something that I had never considered before, but something that I appreciate better now, now that I'm aware of it. So uh, it's all about utilizing and leveraging a group to uh, fill in the blanks and using each person's slither of information and view of the world based on their own experiences to, uh, to make it a little bit easier for everybody to see the whole. And I guess at the end of the day, I'll, I've also read somewhere else that we all get a very, very small view of the world, a small slither. And if we, uh, have, if we depend on our own view, then we're always going to be biased. We're always going to be uh, misguided and potentially manipulated because, uh, because one view can be manipulated, but many views of uh, a similar sort of experience um, can, 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 can colla collaborate, sorry about that, can collaborate into a more perfect and complete view of what's going on especially when everybody can focus on the one thing at the one time, then you're better able to uh, come up with a holistic and a, an accurate and a clearer view of what, what is happening. So uh, a lot happening here down at Circular Quay today. I've never seen this barge um, with the crane on it before. So we'll go a little bit closer and, and uh, look at it again and find out what they're trying to do. But the other important point to come out of the book is that uh, the concept of herd be behaviour. So we've got crowd thinking, but we've also got a, a concept that he, the author brings up, and that's called herd be behaviour, where he says that uh, the herd behaviour can weaken the power of the crowd decisions because another word for herd behaviour is groupthink. And it's a, an illness, a disease that happens amongst groups when they get lazy and they don't think independently, they don't use their critical thinking skills and they basically depend on the group to come up with a decision. And what we'll find is that uh, the group think tends to lead to wrong decisions in many, many cases for many reasons. And the main reason that it doesn't work group think doesn't work is that humans are social beings who prefer prefer to go with the common opinion of the crowd because a crowd lets us hide and keeps us from being found out and excluded so a lot of people live in fear you see it all the time there are people who are just shit scared of voicing their opinion and who are happy to take the opinion of other people, you know, like stupidities, like um, you, know, you, you, you hear it all the time, the conspiracy theorists, you know, the latest one that I've uh, been involved with trying to, uh, to uh, make sense of is how people would even consider, consider that a, a great person like Bill Gates is evil when it's quite obvious that he's uh, changed the world in a better way with uh, his uh, contribution and ongoing contribution. But you know, once again, you'll have certain people who will uh, have extreme views and will want to uh, take an extreme position and use their uh, confirmation biases to look for data, look for information, regardless of how obscure it is, to try and prove that they're right when you know that what they're saying is just nonsensical and absolutely stupid. But uh, there are two factors that influence group think 
and herd behavior and they are called social proofing and uh, your social rank and we've all worked in large organizations we've all been in big groups big families where these two things work together and you can see that the wrong decisions are being made but they're being influenced by social proof and the uh, and the um, um, follow the leader sort of uh, mentality and social proofing is where you tend to trust what others are saying and you basically delegate your decision making to other people thinking and hoping that they know what they're talking about but you look around you see a lot of the uh, comments on Facebook by certain loud and uh, um, um, extreme individuals which tend to do all the talking all the shouting all the influencing using dubious sort of references and people seem to uh, sit back and listen and uh, are afraid to confront these people because uh, because they know that by confronting them they're going to be attacked in public and ridiculed uh, regardless of whether or not uh, the other person you know is, is wrong in what they're saying but because they believe it with so much fervor then they're a dangerous sort of adversary because they'll go out of their way just to uh, make things but worse for the person who uh, has a view other than the same view that they have. But we're going to be careful that we don't allow social proof to replace critical thinking. Because uh, critical thinking at the individual level is the key. We need to think critically, else we'd be influenced and taken along a bloody uh, a path of stupidity by certain people who have the, the microphone. The other thing that we also need to understand is that there's a, there are hierarchies in groups and uh, those hierarchies influence decisions as well, especially where you perceive yourself to sit within a particular hierarchy. That's why I pride myself not to be part of any hierarchy and to uh, sit well outside groups and not to spend too much time being sucked into the vortex of groupthink and hierarchies because I want to be and I want to remain my own person. The very reason that I can sit here and deliver Jim's 5am clubs day in day out and talk about topics that other people don't have the courage to even touch is because I'm independent. I'm not part of any group and I don't care to be part of any particular group nor any hierarchy. I'm my own person who has my own opinions, who doesn't fear anybody and am happy to, uh, to, um, to compete with anybody on an intellectual level, regardless of their title, regardless of uh, their hierarchy, or regardless where they see themselves sitting in the world order because I don't, I'm not a follow the leader sort of person. I, um, I'll, uh, I'll respect people's opinions, but I won't be influenced by them, especially when I've had time to think about it and come up with my own opinion based on my own independent research. So uh, we've got to remember that even if groups can come up with smart decisions, we still need to think independently and make up our own mind and not be influenced by, uh, by the group unless it's a, an, a, a decision which serves us and is aligned to our values and our way of thinking and something that we can uh, ind independently come up with and support. Because at the end of the day, the author talks about the importance of thinking as if you're a pedestrian which is another beautiful way of looking at the world because groups automatically coordinate themselves by looking out for other people 
and not running into each other. So as a pedestrian, when you're walking around, you're always looking out for other people so you don't bump into, uh, bump into them. So as an individual, you adjust your way of thinking, you adjust what you do. You go faster, you go slower, you uh, consider anticipating what the other person's going to do. And that way you can, uh, you can survive within a group and then you can decide whether or not the decisions or the, the thinking that the group's coming up with is something that serves you or not. So uh, I guess that's it from this wonderful book. And it's a call to action to uh, be an independent thinker and not to get sucked into groupthink and not to delegate your thinking to other people regardless of how powerful they may think they are or what their uh, position or status may be. Because just because a person has a title, just because a person is loud, just because a person has a strong opinion, doesn't make them right. You know, the internet is full of opinion and it's full of misguided, stupid opinion that we need to be careful of and we need to be wary of. So for, for, uh, for the young people out there, for uh, parents who've got children, make sure you teach your children to be independent thinkers and to uh, just use the sniff test. Does it make common sense? You know, can it be corroborated by your own values? Can it be corroborated by your own experiences? and not to get carried away with somebody who has an opinion, a loud opinion, and quotes um, things from the internet. Because as we said, the internet is full of extreme views. And a lot of those views are manipulative and manipulated to make you think that the world is uh, the way it is. But in actual fact, it's, uh, it's a lot of bullshit which can, uh, can take you on a, a merry goose chase. Anyway, let's finish up with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, and uh, let's make the most of this wonderful Tuesday and get through this day as best we can. So thank you very much. And until we chat again, I bid you farewell from Jim's 5am club and look forward to coming to you again tomorrow from a different location with a different message, a message of empowerment. And let's encourage each other to take some lessons from this book and be independent thinkers and appreciate that groups, crowds can come up with great decisions where they fill in for each other, but also to be wary that uh, groups are also infected by groupthink where they also come up with shithouse decisions and things which are going to uh, be of a negative, non-serving sort of way in our lives. Take care. Yasas. We like you from Jim's 5am Club. And until we chat again, stay well and have a great day. Bye for now.